Ah, Trotsky, the doomed leader of the Red Army. Being assassinated in Mexico was a rather ignoble end to the would-be successor of Lenin, but when your rival is Stalin, there's really no good ending. Many have speculated, if not insisted, that the Soviet Union would have been better off if he had been able to take control of the reins of power in Russia. And so today, we'll look at what a Trotskyite Russia means for Europe and the world. First, we have to get Trotsky in power, which is a lot more difficult than his current supporters assume. He was considered opinionated, even by leftist radical standards, and wasn't afraid of making enemies. He wasn't even in league with Lenin until the last possible second. This did much to discredit him in the eyes of Lenin as well as several other party members. While Stalin was a master manipulator who did much to strengthen his position in the party and gain the loyalty of the people who would eventually decide the successor to Lenin. Several things need to happen to help out our buddy Trotsky. First of which is having him jump on board with Lenin earlier. This is unrealistic, given how opinionated both men were, but would go a long way to helping him get in good with the leader of the socialist state. If Lenin has a good word to put in for Trotsky upon his death, then party members would be more likely to lend him support. The other thing that needs to happen is Stalin needs to not be appointed as party secretary and be given a lesser job. In that case, Stalin would be so busy trying to up his own position, he wouldn't have time to maneuver himself to the position of successor to Lenin. These are both kind of vague and unlikely things, but we can add something a bit more concrete, a successful invasion of Poland in 1920. Trotsky was a serious advocate for world revolution and felt that Russia needed to press on into Europe and make the world revolution happen ASAP something he and Lenin were in agreement on. In our timeline, they failed the invasion while revolutions across Europe fell apart, which made it clear now was not the time for world revolution. On top of that, Russia was in shambles from its civil war, and many, including Stalin, thought that they needed to focus on fixing up their country before expanding the revolution. If the invasion of Poland succeeded, then Lenin and Trotsky would be enthusiastic about expanding the revolution still further into Germany, which Lenin was sure was on the brink of a communist revolution. Taking Poland would be relatively easy if the Soviet forces are a bit better organized, but even if they succeed, there's no way they could follow it up with an invasion of Germany as their supply lines were already stretched to the limit. Lenin and Trotsky, enthusiastic as they might be, are not fools and would hold off on the invasion until they were better prepared. The country was in no position to perpetuate war further given how wrecked it was from its civil war. Plus, they still had to tie up loose ends in Siberia, the Caucasus, and Ukraine. By the time these were wrapped up, Lenin was in poor health and moves were being made to gain control of the state. With Stalin out of the way and Lenin and Trotsky working closely together planning the invasion of Europe, more credibility would go to Trotsky upon Lenin's death in 1924, and with his control of the Red Army, Trotsky would have a solid position from which to take power. As mentioned, Trotsky was not a super popular guy, and he would have had to use the Cheka to silence opposition and keep himself safe, something he had no issues doing. Another interesting fact about Trotsky was that he was not opposed to using old bourgeoisie professionals to act as advisors for Bolshevik activities, as shown by his push to use old Russian officers as an advisory council during the Civil War, something that caused much protest among the Soviet elite. This idea of using bourgeois to manage the Soviet institutions would be something Trotsky would apply to other areas, including the economy, meaning if there is a five-year plan, it won't result in nearly as much death as Stalin's in our timeline. With that being said, between purging enemies in the party and killing off kulaks, plenty of death would happen under Trotsky. While Russia would be busy industrializing in the late 20s and early 30s, Germany would be panicked. Having the Soviet Union right on their border would frighten the right and convince them that the leftist parties in the Reichstag would be funded by the communists in an attempt to undermine their nation, which would ramp up the violence and slow down demobilization. Paramilitary organizations would probably be a normal feature of German life as soldiers unofficially stand guard for their country. Knowing how Trotsky felt about world revolution, the Communist Party in Germany would certainly receive funds and arms from the Soviets, which they would use to battle the Nazis. I think the Nazis would still come to power in this timeline, possibly even earlier. No other right-wing party was as vigorous or organized as the Nazis, and they certainly lacked someone with the charisma of Hitler. Having Jewish Trotsky in power would lend credence to Hitler's claim about Judeo-Bolshevism, and the violence in the streets would be attributed to Soviet-backed communists. Trotsky would be impatient about starting a world revolution, and would fund rebel movements across the world from the moment he took office. And if the revolutions failed, he wouldn't think twice about invasion. Basically, he would prepare his military for mobilization while funding revolutions in neighboring countries, and when those revolutions failed, he would send in the Soviet military. This aggressive expansionist policy would isolate Russia and drive countries into defensive alliances to block potential Russian expansion, something the Nazis would try and exploit. Hitler comes to power in 1930 on this timeline, and this signals to Trotsky that he will have to invade Germany. Having spent the last six years preparing the Russian military, he would strike as swiftly as possible. But Germany wouldn't be the only country on the agenda. I think it's safe to assume that the countries that fell under dictatorships in our timeline would still do so, and those regimes would put down communist revolts. 
The Russians, with little delay, would make a general push into Eastern Europe. This would prompt the Germans into immediate action and give Hitler the crisis needed to solidify power, as well as convince the German people he was right. The Soviets would overrun Eastern Prussia, Bessarabia, the Baltic states, and might even capture Berlin. At this point, the alliances would kick in and Europe would mobilize against the Soviets. The French would come to the aid of the Little Entente, Germany would push back and try to organize an anti-Bolshevik crusade, and France and Britain would allow Germany to violate the Versailles Treaty, build up their military, and increase manpower to deal with Russia. This combined European front against Russian expansionism would result in an invasion of West Russia and a long war, but one that would ultimately be won by Europe. I doubt the European coalition would be able to take Moscow, but the reversal of fortune for the Russians might spark a coup. If not, then this war could continue indefinitely as these unprepared economies ramp up war production and throw everything they have at each other. Trotsky won't give up on the war, as his whole ideological outlook is staked on it, and the Europeans won't stop until the threat of communism is dealt with once and for all. The Soviets would try and drive a wedge between the Allied powers, while the Allies would try and bring a greater coalition against the Soviets, which would grow to include Japan and Britain. The main point of contention would be between France and Germany, both of whom would try to take leadership role in the alliance, while Britain mediates. I think in the end, the Russians would call it quits. Even with the purges and the respect of the army, Trotsky wouldn't have industrialized as much as was needed to fight this war, and would have spent a large portion of the budget on failed revolutions, while Germany, France, and Britain would have few issues bringing their economies to full force. On top of that, Trotsky's reputation would be undermined by the bourgeoisie professionals he allowed into the country, and his government would be tired of his failed plans. His career would end in disgrace, if not assassination. The end of the war would be a serious issue for the Allies, particularly France and Germany. Germany would want territorial compensation for their fight against the Bolsheviks, while France would see a set of independent buffer states as the best result of the war. Perhaps the two will come to an agreement that will solve the issue for a time, or maybe this conflict will lead to another war, but I can't be certain. Let me know what you think in the comments. So this video was a bit shorter than I normally do. Um, I was kind of rushed this weekend and short for time. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to do, well, I'll definitely be doing a longer one next time. I was going to go through and work my way back through time, as I had mentioned, but having considered it, I'm just going to go back after World War One to making World War Two content. And that's partly because it is pulling the most views right now, and partly because that's my primary field of knowledge, and I'll go over that in another video. Um, so yeah, just giving you guys that update. Uh, like I said, next video will be about World War One and in particular uh, Imperial Germany. So you guys know I'm going to spend a good deal of time on that.